Hey everybody, it's Chris Kirkpatrick and Norbert Joost here with the Executive Job Search Secrets Definitely. Podcast. And uh, really excited to be here talking about this because we're going to be talking about a topic that I think is really important and that is the importance of having confidence in your job search. Now, um, Norbert has been, uh, or has been before he joined us uh, at CareerNext, had been in, uh, a recruiter in the medical device uh, space for Correct. 14 plus years. Correct. And so with that, he's obviously seen a lot and we're going to kind of touch on that. But I, w I want to kind of talk about something really quickly before we get into the in, into the overall topic. There was a book I read, uh, I want to say it was five, six, seven years ago, something of that nature. Malcolm Gladwell uh, wrote a book called David and Goliath. And in the book, he actually alludes to the fact that confidence is the number one indicator of success. It's not your IQ. It's not relationships. It's not like any of these other, it's not where you got your degree from. It's not, you know your intelligence on any level, it really has to do with your confidence. He, he even goes through and says, uh, and, and they actually, there's a study, and I'm telling you, you should read this book because it's, it's amazing, but they do this study where they follow graduates from Harvard, they follow graduates from other state universities, they follow graduates from Brown University, and, and they basically track where they were in their class, um, and, uh, and they track some people who were like at Harvard and in the bottom half of the class, in the bottom quarter of the class, and then they transferred, they gave this one example of, of a, si a circumstance where somebody transferred from Harvard in the bottom 10%, transferred to, I think it was for University of Virginia. It was like, a, I think a place in Virginia, it doesn't really matter. Right. It was a public university, and they ended up being uh, like top 5% in that class. And so they went from failure, and the whole concept is like, listen, we all grow up, and I fight with my father-in-law about this because he's like always like, your kids are going to Harvard. I'm like, ah, maybe, we'll see. Like, it might not be the best place for them, right? Depends, depends on them, right? And because it's not about just going to Harvard, it's about where are you set up to build your confidence and to be the most successful? Like, so this person, we have to think about things properly. It's not just about getting into Harvard. It's like, can you be successful there? And if you think about it, if there's, a thousand students at Harvard, you have a top 10% and a bottom 10% in every environment, a top 50% and a bottom 50%. And sadly, a lot of these people that got into Harvard, maybe because, um, you know, they, they qualified and Harvard has to get a certain amount of people in that, that, that statistic is always going to be there. It's really your responsibility to make sure that you're making the best decisions for yourself. Right. right. And, and so what they showed was people that were at the bottom of the pile at Harvard. And if you're at Harvard and surrounded by all these brilliant people, what's you, you, it doesn't make you less intelligent, right? right? But what does it do? It smushes your confidence right? because you're surrounded by people that are, even though you're brilliant, right? The world's full of brilliant people. It, you're surrounding yourself with people who are more brilliant than you and therefore your confidence. It doesn't give you the opportunity to excel, to exceed, to right to differentiate yourself from everybody else, right? And so when well, you take somebody who's in that bottom portion out and you put them in another right. group of people, it allows them to rise. And so we've actually top. just gone through this decision-making process. Yeah. I have a daughter that's a senior in high school. Yeah. I have a son that's a sophomore in college. Yeah. We just have gone through this process. Yeah. And to your point and Malcolm Gladwell's point, yeah. you know, are you better off being the top of the class at ASU mm -hmm. or the bottom of your class at Harvard? Totally. And some people would say, oh, well, you're better off being the bottom of your class at Harvard, to make Wrong. your point. And, you know, does it your resume say Harvard? Yeah, but are you maybe, to your point, again, are you maybe 10 times better off being at the top of your class at Arizona State, University 100%. of Arizona, Iowa State, wherever that is, mm -hmm. because of how much more confident you're going to be, and that's going to carry over into your first job, which carries over in your next job, and so forth. 100%. And so, so... I bring this up simply because I think the importance of confidence in your job search, the importance of your confidence in your day-to-day -day activities and what you do with your job is really, really important. The importance that you of confidence that you bring to the interview process is really important, right? And so it's, I always kind of tell people like, people focus, I think, too much on resumes. They focus too much on, uh, you know, the presentation of like, how am I uh, positioning myself on my resume? I would say this is like, is that important? Yes, it's important. Like we all need, we all want to make sure that we have our best resume that we can. We want to make sure that it positions us well. We want to make sure we use the right keywords, key phrases, key analytics, key metrics, all these different things that are, are going to be relevant and, and important, impactful to the people who are potentially looking to hire you. Okay, that's great. However, 
you can have the best resume in the world. The reality is nobody hires a resume. A resume may get you in the door, but if you don't show up to that interview like and knock it out of the park and show up with the confidence and be prepared to just wow them and blow them away, like I cannot tell you how many people I've met that get interview after interview after interview because their resume was fantastic, but then they don't show up ready to play the game. Right. Like they, they're, they, they don't show up prepared, and it's not prepared like to answer the right questions. It's prepared mentally and emotionally with the right confidence to present yourself in an impactful way that's gonna give other people confidence in you. Because if, if, if you don't show up with that confidence, it's gonna be very, very apparent that you don't have the confidence in yourself. Right. And the reality is, if you can't sell yourself, if you don't have the confidence in yourself, how do you expect the person on the other side of the table who's looking to hire you to have that confidence in you? It's right. just not gonna happen. Right, so let's dive into that yeah. a little greater. So. To Again, to your point, mm -hmm. a resume is the ticket to the interview. That is what gets you in the door. And a lot of people rely on their resume and think that I just have to push it across the desk, yeah. boom, look at my accomplishments, hire me, I've uh -huh. done great. But the reason for face-to-face -face interviews is because they wanna see what you're made of. Yeah. They want to, I mean, if, if they just hired off of resumes, there would never be face-to-face -face interviews. So face-to-face -face yep. interviews take place to get a sense of your ability to communicate, mm -hmm. your, your confidence, your ability to represent the company, how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have experienced a great deal in the medical pharmaceutical world yeah. is the beautiful people syndrome, right? <laughs> sure. So m there's a huge misconception that, you know, oh, it's only beautiful women that get into pharmaceutical sales. It's only college athletes that get into medical sales or pharmaceutical sales. Yeah. And yes, there is a great deal of those type of people in mm -hmm. the medical and pharmaceutical world. Sure. But as you and I have discussed before, there's a reason for that. And it's not because of this that gets them in, it is because... Right, it's it's not their appearance, it's not their network or whatever, it's really their confidence. I mean, it, it's think about it this way. If, if you are an attractive person, if you are somebody who has had success and you've had people boasting you up about how you look your entire life, if you're an athlete who's been told that you you know you got into Division One athletics or Division Two athletics, you've probably been a really exceptional athlete your entire life, and you're used to people building you up and boasting you up. So what does that do? That builds your confidence. Like it, it also brings you in, into a paradigm where you've probably had some failures in life. You've had to work through failures, and you understand what that what that process is like, right? And so. Like, once again, when you go through those cycles a little bit, it builds your confidence and you realize that, yeah, bad things are gonna happen, but that doesn't make you less of a person. That doesn't make you le less capable. It doesn't make you, right. you know, less of anything. And so, so what, what I think is important to understand and what, you know, I think um, I, the important part to take from this is, yes, there is probably a greater percentage of, you know, attractive people, of athletes, of whatever, in these high performing sales type positions. Right. I don't think there's any denying that, but the question is always why? And it's not because- Right, what comes first, the chicken right. or the egg? Right, and it really comes down to confidence. And so when, when people come and they say they're interested in breaking into the medical field or in any highly competitive environment, quite frankly. I mean, it could, right. be, it could be technology sales, it could be medical sales, it could be like any highly competitive uh, position, which let's face it, any position where you're making six figures and up, you know, up to mid six figures is, is going to be that. And, right. and a lot of these high sales positions get you there. And so when that's the case, the number one thing you need to think about is, okay, who are the people that are there? I was all, one of my first mentors told me, I'll put it this way. If you want to be successful, go find the people who are doing what you want to do and emulate what they do to get there. Now, you obviously can't go out and be an athlete if you weren't an athlete. You know, we're, we're born with the physical attributes we're given. And right. so that that is what it is, right? Um, and, and so you can't look at it from that perspective. You just have to look at the, the confidence level. You have to look at like, what have they done to get to that point in time? Like, what are things you can do 
to develop and enhance yourself. And that's one of the reasons that we... That's exactly what I was just going to ask you. So if you're not born with it, yeah. how do you develop it? Well, you got to be intentional, right? Like one, one of my uh, other companies is Life 180 and it's living intentionally for excellence, right? And right. so I'm a big believer in living intentionally and, and, and going after like... You got to start with the end in mind and you got to reverse engineer a process to get there or a system to get there. So it's like, if you know you want to get a medical uh, sales job, you have to do the research ahead of time and you have to know what your responsibilities for that are going to be, right? right? And then you have to go find people who are there and the best bet is to go out and talk to them, interview them, you know, network with them on LinkedIn, connect with them and, and, and see what you can get for information from them as far as like, you know, what can you do? Like, what should you be studying? What should, what skills should you be developing and enhancing? You know, because you, if you're coming in and you're a nurse and you're looking to get into the medical sales, which that happens a ton, right? right? Like just because you have a, an understanding of the medical background, um, that's great. But guess what? That's so does everybody else. You know, that's, that, that, that's just your entry into the ball game, right? Like that's not going to get you on the playing field. Right. That's not going to get you the job. That's going to get you a ticket to have a conversation with somebody. What's going to get you the job and what's going to get you on the playing field is, is going to be your ability to have that confidence and sell yourself and show that you have these proficient skills. And sometimes you have to go get jobs in other areas. If, you, if you're a, a nurse, guess what? You're not getting hired by a sales company to be a nurse. You're getting hired by a sales company to be a salesperson. Correct. And so your skills that made you an amazing nurse and made you amazingly technologically or, or like technically advanced in understanding all the medical innuendos of everything that's going on with the sales, that's fantastic, but that doesn't make you a good salesperson. There's a lot of things to that. And so in fact, probably because you haven't focused on being a salesperson, you've got a lot of work to do. And so that's where it might make sense to get another sales job and figure out what are some bridge sales positions that can help you get into that gap. And I know you've had a lot of people and helped a lot of people go through that process. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, tremendously. And, and so, okay, go well, ahead. Well, the, the one thing I was just gonna say is that with the, the, the confidence aspect that we're talking about yeah. here, the, the main thing that we talked about is that whether you were born with it or weren't born with it, mm -hmm. it, it, it it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. It has to start somewhere. Yeah. And, and so that may mean that you need to start exercising. That may mean yep. that you need to take those baby steps to increase your confidence start eating right, start whatever it is to start those things to build that confidence that carries over into that interview, yep. that carries over to that interviewee mm -hmm. so that you can show your confidence to them mm -hmm. as you're going through the process. So, you know, back to the question, it, is it something you have to be born with? And the answer of course is no. Then, you know, how do you develop that? And it, it's, it's like everything we discuss in the Career Accelerator Club, it's putting steps together and sure. following those steps. Sure. And we will help you with that in the course. Mm -hmm. But additionally, it's, it's just figuring out, you know, where it is you wanna go, what you wanna do to start off with, mm -hmm. follow your plan, develop your plan, mm -hmm. and but know that you have to have that confidence. Amen. And figuring out how it is you're going to get there. 100%. And okay, I'm going to give a little hard truth right now. And this may be hard for some people to hear or whatever. Um, if, if you are lacking confidence, the one person you're not going to be able to lie to and fool in this life is yourself. Period. Right. You know all of your negative thoughts. You know all of your self-doubts. You know all of your weak points. You know all these, all everything negative that you could ever put in a box about you everything negative I know about myself I know about me we all have these weaknesses there's no perfect person there's one perfect person ever to walk this earth and he died 2,000 years ago like so it's not you it's not me none of us are perfect we all have weaknesses and so here's the thing when when we're going through life when we're going through interviews when we're networking we all have our own little self-doubts and and so the one person you can't lie to is yourself so when when you are trying to lie to yourself. And I see this a lot where people are like, oh, if I just get the interview, I'll be good. Or, you know, my interview, like, just get me the resume, like my resume speaks for itself. I'm this amazing person. Well, if you're that amazing, like, 
let's face it, we probably wouldn't be talking. You right. Wouldn't, you wouldn't need help. And like, that doesn't mean you aren't amazing. It just means like we all go through processes and, and different transitions in life where we need a little help to get to the next level and that's okay. Right. You cannot lie to yourself. And one of the things that I, one of, one of my favorite quotes of all time is if it's <clears> worth <throat> doing, it's worth doing poorly until you're good at it. And so what I would ask you before we end this is to think about how important is this ideal job, whatever it is that you're looking for, whether it's looking to run a company as a CEO, a CFO, a COO on a C-suite level or anything, whether you're looking to get on the board of directors for a company, whether you're looking to become a medical salesperson or a technology salesperson or anything of that nature. Regardless, how badly do you want it? And my guess is if you're watching this video, um, you may not be, I mean, the fact of the matter is if you haven't got the job yet, there's something you need to do to, to bridge that gap, right? right? And so the question is, what do you need to do? Like, where are you? And, and you're probably not proficient in that thing that you need to fill the gap. So if it's worth doing, i.e. If, if, if that job is that important for you, it's worth doing it poorly, i.e. just doing it and, and struggling and getting through it and practicing and doing these things that make you uncomfortable, uh, it's worth doing poorly until you're good at it. And if you do that, I promise you, like you will see incremental success and, and growth and advancement. And that's ultimately what's going to help you elevate yourself uh, uh, from the crowd and differentiate yourself from the other people in the market that are competing for that same position. Right. Because I promise you, 99% of the people in the market going for the same positions, they may be more naturally gifted and talented than you, and or maybe they're not. I don't know. But this holds true. There have been plenty of athletes, plenty of people in life that succeed based on work ethic, grit, determination, focus, intentional living, all these things. The people that want to, if you, if you ever get an email from me, and I'm going to botch this quote pretty bad right now, but if you, it's my favorite quote of all time. Calvin Coolidge said it. Um, you know, it's, it's that uh, talent is the most overrated thing in the world basically and i'm not going to give the whole quote but it's basically like hard work determination is the number one thing that will separate you from everybody in your life it, and, and i've seen way more and i can speak to this i've seen so many talented people in life fail and get beat by somebody with less talent more determination more grit better work ethic more focus and more intentionality. Absolutely. And that's what I want to encourage for you. And when we build these courses, when we have our coaching, when we have the Career Accelerator Club and all the content and products and like stuff that we do to help job seekers, that that's the focus. That's really why we, we do what we do. Right. So. Yeah, and you know, obviously my background is in the medical and pharmaceutical sales world. Yeah. So I use that as a reference. We use that as a reference quite a bit. But this carries over to everything. Well, the bank vice president, the, the financial services person, the no matter what it is in life that you want to do, you will see those same attributes yeah. in anyone and everyone that you come in contact with. So you can look in the mirror, speak some hard truth, uh -huh. and you can either say, oh, I just didn't get it, that person must have been better, or you can look in the mirror and say, what do I need to do to become better? Mm -hmm. And how do I gain that confidence? How do I get to the next level? Amen. And Love we it. can teach you that. Love it. Um, and you are a John Maxwell coach, aren't you? I am. Yeah, so that's kind of a big deal. Like, that. that's, we'll save that for another video, but I, I think that's one of the, I think not to, boost our own, you know, burst our own bubble or toot our own horn or whatever the phrase is there. I'm totally bad at those sorts of things, those catchphrases. <laughs> but like... Cliches. It, cliches, there you go. If, if you have any questions, if you need help, if you're kind of seeking and you're uncertain about what to do next, reach out to us. We would love to help you. We'd love to plug you into our community. Uh, we'd love to serve you in any way possible. We do what we do to serve. We, we want to help people in the world that we're in right now. There's never been more uncertainty in the environment. The world is shutting back down again. It's like, it's complete insanity, but it doesn't need to be negative for you. There's always going to be opportunity for high performers. That's what I believe at my core. And that's why we do what we do. We want to build a community of high performing, uh, productive, you know, job seekers and employees out there in the world. And that's what this is all about for right. us. So if you kind of want to get there and you need the help, we have the programs, we have customized coaching, we have... Uh, the Career Accelerator Club. We have all sorts of other things. Reach out. You can have a free consultation with me or Norbert here. 
Uh, you could just go to careernextagency.com. You could check it out uh, and feel free to reach out anytime. Just go to careernextagency.com. You can also email support at careernextagency.com. We'd be happy to connect with you at any point in time and uh, feel free to reach out with any questions that you have at all. Got anything else? Good to go? That's it. All right. Have Look a blessed. Look forward to your next video. Have a blessed inspirational day. Crush it. We'll talk soon. Take care.